While Pikachu is the more popular younger sibling to Raichu, when it comes to VGC, Raichu is a more solid pick in most instances. Now what makes Raichu so good is that it's one of the faster fake out users in the format and its ability lightning rod that negates electro type attacks while Raichu is on the field and raises its special attack by one each time one is used is very powerful much like Gastrodon Storm Drain. Pair this with Terra Fairy, and now you have a hard counter to one of the most popular Pokemon in the format currently. In the team we're featuring today, made by Sableye VGC, Raichu takes a different approach to its normal playstyle. While still providing strong fakeout support and speed control with Electro Web, this Raichu is also running Upper Hand, the new move from the Indigo Disc that fakes out opposing Pokemon using priority attacks. If you pair this with a Dragonite with the Inner Focus ability, making it unable to be flinched, as well as Terra Normal and a Weakness Policy, you now have an insanely powerful duo that your opponents will not see coming. So in the first battle, we have a pretty standard looking team that has Blood Moon, Ursa Luna, and Furgraph for a potential Trick Room mode, as well as Tornadus with Urshifu for a faster option. So my initial thought is to just get Fluttermane and Entei out on the field to do as much damage as possible while also not being able to be faked out by the potential Rillaboom lead. This is pretty solid for me because if I do lead the Rillaboom to try and fake out any of my shenanigans, I'm able to just kind of ignore them with the Entei and then start laying down Sacred Fires. And then Fluttermane can just do big damage as well. And then in the back, I'm just going to bring Raichu and Dragonite as solid options in case I save my Terrestrialization and I'm able to just go for massive damage in the end game with Terra Normal as well as an Upper Hand. Let's see what they got here. What are they leading with? They've got the... Horn Dersh. We are booster speed. Very nice. Um, I think what I want to do is just go for a Sacred Fire over here. I could even go for Icy Wind. I'm kind of tempted to go for Icy Wind. Yeah, I think that's what I want to do. That's going to lower the speed pretty significantly this subsequent turn and allow me to still outspeed which will be really nice there's the tailwind there's the wicked blow we should take that very nicely now yep and the Icy Wind will break the Sash. Does Entei have the power to take this KO? Not quite, but it is in range of an E-Speed. So I think we just click E-Speed there and go for a Moon Blast. I think we just do that. Click E speed, go for a moon blast. Now the the thing is, now that we've done this, we actually can't proc our weakness policy on Dragonite in the end game, which gets a little little interesting. They just go for detect, that's fine. Oh, they are still faster. I was not expecting that. They are still faster. Moonblast is going to go off. Oh, wow. Was not expecting that. Okay. We E-speed there. Um, And we protect Fluttermane this turn. We protect the Flutter this turn. They withdraw the Torn. They want the speed control for the remainder of the game. That makes sense. Oh! For Rigoraf. That makes a lot of sense. Because now they can Wicked Blow me. Well played. Well played. Oh, but they went for Sucker. Why'd you do that? That doesn't make any sense. Uh, let's look at the rest of their team. Nothing likes taking a Sacred Fire. We go for Sacred Fire, and I think I actually just swap here. Yeah, I'm going to swap. I'm going to sack the Raichu, potentially. I 
I wonder if they have Blood Moon because of that. Makes me wonder if they have Blood Moon. Let's get the Raichu in. And we can start laying like Electro Webs and stuff down. They just go for Detect this turn. Makes sense. Psychic Noise. Okay. Was not expecting that. Does Psychic Noise stop? I don't, I don't know if it does. Tailwind's gone. That's good for us. I don't know if Psychic Noise stops. I'm going to go for the Snarl and Electro Web this turn. I don't know that Psychic Noise stops a berry or not. I really don't. I haven't seen enough Psychic Noise play to know that information. They go for the Sucker into Entei. We take a decent ship there. Electro Web goes off. Speed drop on both of the Pokemon. Little Snarl into the Ferrigraph to lower that special attack. Another Psychic Noise goes off. Raichu takes that swimmingly. Now we'll get to know. Okay. I, I guess I can use the berry. That was weird. Weird interaction. Okay. What's their next Pokemon? Fluttermane. Okay. Um, I mean, I just go for Sacred Fire, and I think I have to go for, yeah, I go for Sacred Fire, and I go for Electro Web. Terra Fairy comes off. Do we take the D-Gleam at this range? I don't know that we do with the Helping Hand. We do! That's big. That's big. That's actually kind of crazy. I don't know that we take the KO, though. Oh, it's so close. Burn it, burn it, burn it. Ooh! Burn it! Let's go! Sacred Fire, baby! That is massive. That is absolutely massive. We get Dragonite in now. We get Dragonite in now. And we click Outrage. Nothing's stopping it now. Uh, we just go for another Snarl. And we click Outrage. They go for Bleak Wind. Do they miss Entei? They missed Entei. That's huge. They missed both! They missed both! Oh my gosh! Outrage goes off, hits the Farigarap. Good damage. Snarl goes off, that'll take the KO. Oh my gosh, what a battle! Down goes the Torn. <laughs> what a battle! D Gleam goes off. Gonna proc weakness policy! Gonna proc weakness policy! Oh my gosh. We go for Snarl again. We're locked into Outrage. That's the battle. GG. Game 2 has a really interesting looking team. It's very hyper offensive with Fluttermaid and Chi Yu, while also having a speedier option with Whimsicott as well as Goldango and Bramblegast, which is a little scary considering we don't really have a way to hit that incredibly hard with this team, especially because our Fluttermaid isn't running a Shadow Ball, which I actually didn't know in the moment. So I immediately think to myself that I'm going to lead Raichu and Dragonite so I can immediately start going for a Terra Normal and Upper Hand play 
to start doing big damage as quickly as possible especially if the whimsicott decides to just go for tailwind and there's a protect turn one that is going to give me the opportunity to knock out the whimsicott as well as deal big damage to the rest of the team in subsequent turns with e-speed and then in the back i bring my ogre pawn ogre pawns can play nicely into a lot of the pokemon here goldango chiyu fluttermane and if that is a water shifu plays fantastically into that as well and then finally i do bring my fluttermane because the speed could give me an advantage in the late game especially with raichu having access to electro web i could be able to mitigate speed tiers enough that my fluttermane can just do massive work in the end all right raichu dragonite lead let's see what we got whimsicott chiyu okay i can work with that Huh. I think I fake out Whimsicott. What if... What if I fake out Chi Yu? No. Pick out Whimsicott and go for Aerial Lace onto Whimsicott as well. Hopefully it's not Covert Cloak. If we get this read right, we get a free KO. Hopefully it's just, uh, oh, it's, it's Covert Cloak. Okay. It is Covert Cloak. So that's a touch unfortunate. I think now we do the funny. I think now we do the funny. I think this puts us in a good position. Assuming they don't read us in Terra. I think this puts us in a really strong position. We get the Terra Normal off. This is going to allow us to crack our weakness policy with upper hand. And then hopefully take the KO on the Chiyu. I would imagine they are not tearing. This is such a cool strategy. This is such a cool way to use Raichu. Upper hand. Bop. Cool. That did a lot of damage, actually. <laughs> that did a fair bit of damage. Weakness policy proc. And hopefully this just takes the Chiyu. The Chiyu might be sashed, though, now that I'm thinking about it. The Chiyu might actually be sashed if the Whimsicott wasn't. Oh, it's not, though. Woo! Okay. That's good. That's good. D-Gleam goes off. That actually didn't do anything to Raichu. How much? Oh, we're pretty... We're a little bulky, Chew. We're a little bulky. Goldango's gonna come in. Okay. I think going for an Electro Web and E-Speed this turn is really good. Even if we lose Dragonite, we take out their ability to have speed control for the remainder of the game. And I think that's huge for us. I think that would actually be very massive for us. And they could even Nasty Plot this turn, which allows us to have a subsequent turn of going for... Um, have a subsequent turn of going for E-Speeds, which could be really, really good. Wimmy goes down. All right. Let's see what they do. Do they nasty plot? Because that could be really beneficial if they nasty plot. Nope. They just go for the make it rain. Okay. Special attack drop is very nice because now they can't swap. That's really big for us. But we got rid of their speed control for the remainder of the game. So I'm here for that. We do get our citrus berry proc on our Raichu, which is sweet. I, that might actually let us take another, um, that might let us take another, uh, make it rain. All right, we're going to get an Ogre Pond now. Bramblegast is the last Pokemon. Okay. That is scary. I'm not going to lie. That is scary. They got Wind Rider. 
This is their last turn of Tailwind, though, which is really big for us. So I actually just want to go for an Electro Web and a Spiky this turn. Electro Web and Spiky is going to be very, very beneficial. Because now I can get speed control, assuming they don't take out my Raichu. They go for Poltergeist. Does that do anything to Ogre Pond? Holding the Wellspring Mask? We get another Electro Web down. Going to slow down the opposing Pokemon. Are they locked into Make It Rain? They might be locked into Make It Rain. That'd be really good if they're locked in to make it rain. I'm not going to lie. Tailwind's gone. Um, I go for another Electro Web. Or actually, what I do is I go for Helping Hand. And I go for Ivy Cudgel on a Goldango. I don't need any more speed control. We've already got the speed drops on everything that we need. I just need to KO Goldango and I have this game on lock. <laughs> They go for the Poltergeist. It does work on the Wellspring Mask. I didn't know that, actually. That's a lot of damage. Um, I have a couple options here. I think I just go for Electro Web, and I just do a Spiky this turn. Just get a little more Chip. I think that's the most beneficial thing I can do. Okay. Okay. That's fair. Raichu put in a crazy amount of work this battle. Electro Web. Uh, I don't need Electro Web at this point. I just wanted it for Chip last turn. Let's go for Ivy Cudgel and Helping Hand again. They could Shadow Sneak me. I think that's very possible. They could most definitely Shadow Sneak me. They do Shadow Sneak me. Should have gone for Electro Web. But we do have our Fluttermane in the back to clean the game. They do still have their Terra. Don't they? Yeah, they haven't terra Hmm. I kind of just want to go for Electro Web and Protect this turn. Just to see what they do. Just to see what they do. They're going to protect as well. Okay. All right. This kind of puts us in a weird spot, admittedly. Helping Hand. And we don't have Shadow Ball, actually. We just have Moon Blast. So I think I do want a Helping Hand Moon Blast here. Here comes their Terra. Terra Ghost. They're going to try and do as much damage as they possibly can. Helping Hand goes off. They go for the Shadow Sneak. Fingers crossed that we can actually take this hit. We are very bulky. We don't take the hit. Oh, no. Oh my gosh, that's actually insane. We don't take the hit. That's crazy. GG. Wow, Bramble Guest. That's insane. I can't believe we didn't take that hit. Wow. In the final battle, we have another pretty standard looking team here. And this definitely looks like a potential rain team with Tornadus as well as Lando Incarnate and Ogre Pond. So I do need to be very cautious of that ability for them to just set the rain and start doing big damage with things like Sandseer Storm. So I decide that I'm actually going to bring Raichu in the back this game and I want to try and get off as much early damage as possible with my Dragonite as well as my Chan Pao. So I can also not only play with the Dragonite and do big damage because of the lower defense stat from the Chan Pao, but I can also use the Chan Pao's ice type attacks that'll play very favorably into Ogre Pond, Tornadus, as well as Lando and Amoongus. 
And then in the back, I bring Raichu as well as my own Ogre Pond. I figure if they're going to set the rain, my Ogre Pond could play very favorably in the endgame scenario if the rain is still active. Let's see what we got here. Okay, Torn Flutter. They are booster what? Booster special attack. I gotta think how I want to deal with this. I think I double the Flutter main. They're gonna Terra. Yeah, I think we have to double the Flutter main. We go for the Terra because that's gonna save our Dragonite. We're gonna be on the back foot though. We're definitely gonna be on the back foot this battle. Definitely going to be on the back foot. There's the Tailwind. He's going to put us in a very scary spot. There's the D-Gleam. Lots of damage on a Dragonite. Not as much as I was anticipating, I'm not going to lie. Not as much as I was anticipating. But Ice Spinner will connect. That brings it down to 1 HP. That is calc like you would not believe. So Fluttermane goes down. Uh, that's a decent trade. That's a decent trade. We'll have to see what they bring in. In comes... Urshifu. What do I got in the back? Okay, we can still make this work. We can still make this work. Huh. I'm going to swap in Raichu to take this hit. And I'm going to go for the Sucker Punch into the torn. That's my plan. Oh, they detect this turn. I'm good with that. I'm really okay with that. Because Sucker's going to do decent damage into that torn. Bleak Wind missed Chen Pao. Ah! Man, if that missed Chen Pao, that would have been crazy awesome. We can get Dragonite back in now. And this puts us in a really commanding position. This puts us in an insanely commanding position. We go for the fake out. And we go for the E speed. We go for the fake out. We go for the E speed. That'll take out Torn. They can't protect this turn. We're able to fake out the Urshifu and break a Sash. Subsequent turn, we can go for the upper hand E speed play. And that brings it to a 2v1 situation with Raichu and Ogre Pond at the end game. That's crazy. Let's see what they do. Do they switch Urshifu? I can totally see them switching Urshifu. Nope, we break a Sash. That's golden. That's what we like to see. E-Speed goes off. Should take out the Torn from this range. Nice. What's our last Pokemon? Urshifu Sash is broken. Lando. All right.
I think I have to go for the upper hand into the Lando slot, honestly. I'm doing that. I'm doing that. I think that has to be our play. I think we have to try and take out this Lando more than anything else. Nice. Let's go. That's huge. Absolutely massive. Wait, they went for Sucker Punch? Oh my gosh, they went for Sucker Punch! Oh my gosh, we can go for Electro Web and we can go for E Speed, and that's the battle. That's the battle. GG, Raichu, let's go!